worship him in spirit and in truth and to have one more chance at it. You know, if you messed up yesterday, you have another chance today. You have an opportunity to fix whatever it is that you messed up. You have to thank God for another chance because there's some people that did not have that. Once again, I'm, I'm so glad to see everybody this morning. I'm glad to see our visitors this morning as well. Yes. You are indeed our honored guest. Yes. Um, and, and thank God uh, that you're here. I'm um, praying and trusting that, that you'll, this won't be the last time. We'll see you some more. It's always wonderful to see David. Uh, yes. God, God bless you for coming out this morning. Um, right. and, and all of our other visitors. Not really so much visitors anymore. You're, you're coming back frequently. Thank God for that. Yes. We're, we're glad to see you. Come and, come and join us again. And uh, I want to give your attention to, uh, put your attention to uh, Psalms chapter 103. 103. Psalms chapter 103, and we'll be on our way. And 93.3, speaking of three, 93.3 is the radio station that, that Brother Miller is, is preaching on every Lord's Day at 9 o'clock, from 9 to 10 o'clock. He had a, a wonderful lesson this morning as well. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't have this scripture as, as a part of my lesson this morning. I, I added it on okay. because I heard him speak on it uh -huh. this morning. And it went right along with, with what I was going to speak about this morning in, in my topic. Okay. So, so he was talking about something else this morning. Tune in. Tune in to 93.3. And, and, and he has some wonderful lessons. And, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's also amazing because I hear some people speaking in the in the recording, reading scriptures that you know, uh -huh. take that it back, no longer you know, take with it back, us. Take and it, back, it takes me back to when I was a kid. <laughs> I remember. I remember all those times. It was uh, so many, so many, so many fond memories of, of when I was here uh, as a child. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. It's still amazing. And I love you all. Um so and 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 also my YouTube channel, uh Preacher Man Stan. Also, uh, go ahead and, and go and look at some of those lessons as well, if, okay. you, if you would. So we'll go ahead and be on our way this morning. Psalms chapter 103, starting at verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, amen, O oh my soul, and all, not some, all that is within me, bless his holy name. There's a song we used to sing anyway. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that okay. is within me. Bless his holy okay. name. It's a, it's a beautiful song, beautiful song. All that is within me, you bless him. And bless the Lord, oh my soul, and don't forget all his benefits. See, yeah. see it's, it's easy to forget sometimes when you do something for so long, church. When, you, when you've been in the church for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you, you, might, you might sometimes forget all of the, the good things that come along with serving the Lord, you might start to focus on the persecution. Because you know that when you're a Christian, you're going to suffer persecution. There's going to be people that, that persecute you for no reason at all. You know you don't have to do nothing to nobody for them to hate you. You don't have to do nothing. Sometimes people hate you because somebody lied on you and they believe you. You don't have to do nothing. See, see, you're going to suffer some persecution as a, as a Christian. That's scripture. But you have to focus on, on the goal that's, that's at the end. You see, you have to focus on, on heaven because that's what's going to make all of this worth it. All of the suffering that I have to go through, all of the pain, the trials and tribulation, watching my, my family members, my, my close friends reject the gospel, knowing what the end is for them, that sadness that I feel, I can still have joy that surpasses all understanding. Because I know that at the end, there are some benefits. That's why he said, forget not his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Ain't that something? Who healeth all thy diseases? <laughs> we need some of that right now, amen. Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? And listen to this. This is the key right here. Because we just had some wonderful food, didn't we? On oh, Thursday. Yeah. Y'all had some good food? Anyway. I had some good food. Anyway. It was it was delicious. Listen to this. He said, Who satisfied thy mouth 
with good things. With good things, church. He satisfies your mouth with good things. Now, let me ask you something. Is the ingredients to a recipe important? Very, brother. What, what if they <laughs> stuffed that turkey with, with rotten tomatoes? Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. I ain't going there. Uh, what if what if they they stuffed it? They they saw them, they had it. I don't know, but I had some of those those food boxes, man. That that fruit and vegetables they go bad quick. Don't yeah. <laughs> you start seeing some stuff flying around? Oh, we got to get rid of this. Yeah. What if they say, you know what? I can still use this. It's got flies flying all around it. It's got all the mold on it and everything. And you know what? Let's let's stuff this in the turkey. It'll still it'll still be good. See, see, church, the ingredients to the food have to be pure. That's the title of the lesson this morning. Okay. Pure ingredients. Pure ingredients. Because the Lord satisfies your mouth with good things. And what does it do? So that thy youth is renewed like an eagle's. When you satisfy yourself with the good things, with the perfect things, with the, the perfect word that comes from God. See, man shall not be satisfied by bread alone, but by every, every word of God. And when he feeds you that bread of life, guess what is pure? He's not giving you something that's been sitting out for two weeks. He's giving you something that is pure. Church, the gospel is pure, and you can be cleansed by it. Do you, do you take a bath in dirty water? Or, or do you or, or do you take a bath in pure, yeah. clean water? You know, I, we live in Lehigh. Sometimes that water is kind of. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all live in Lehigh? Yeah. Sometimes if you don't put the softener in there, that water is kind of brown. You, you see it coming out of the shower. It makes it right. You hear that? Uh, coming out of the shower, it turns brown. All right, let me get out of here. <laughs> we, need to, we need to put some more rocks in the softener. You gotta take a bath in clean, clean water. In order to be cleansed by something, it itself has to be pure. But see, church, we 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 unpurify the gospel when we start adding. Every time, brother. Right? Yeah. See that, that water before it turned brown, it was pure. But but what happened to the water was that it became unpure when the dirt and the Got added. They got added to it. See, church, we don't take a bath in unpure water. We don't cook with spoiled ingredients. Uh -huh. and, and neither should you be cleansed by an unpurified gospel. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 15. Let's let's hear let's hear Jesus talking okay. about how the scribes and the Pharisees yes. they they unpurified yes, they did. the gospel. In Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 1. First time, if you will, what does it say? The gospel is pure. Be cleansed by it. Go, go down, go down a little bit on the way. Uh, the dark, the dark. Then came to that's, Jesus scribes yeah, and Pharisees, right. which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Now notice what the tradition was of. The tradition was of the elders. It was exactly. of of men, church. So, so why don't you do what all of the other men do? Is what the, the scribes and Pharisees were saying. Why don't you do what what these men are doing over here? Everybody is doing this. Why don't you do it? Everybody has all of these instruments. Everybody has yes. women. Yes. Everybody has. Yes. All, why aren't you doing it? Let me tell you what Jesus said to them. What you said? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Read. But Jesus answered and said, what? But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God? You asking me why I don't do what men do? I'm going to ask you something. Why you don't do what God said to you? Yeah. Read. For God commanded. For God commanded what? He said, sing. He said, say nothing else. What did God say? He said, he said, women ought to be silent. First Timothy chapter 2. What did he say? He said, a whole bunch of things that, that we just, just kind of look past. That's it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like that. It's in there, brother. But it's in the Bible. It's yeah. right there, clear as day. Uh, well, he didn't really mean oh, that. Oh, come on, now. You know. And, and look, everybody else is. They're doing it. 
But God commanded, read. Saying, honor thy father and mother. Mm -hmm. Read. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Yeah, so God gave a commandment, but, but here you are, you're going to twist it. Because it doesn't fit what you wanted to say. Read. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. <laughs> Read. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So you can you can just give a gift and, and then if you if you don't honor them, it's alright. Because it, it, it fits what you want it to, to be. Read. And honor not his father or his mother. They don't honor their father. God said, honor your father. Like, well, let me just give him a gift and you know, we'll be alright. But that's not what God said. No. And and listen, this is Jesus talking now. If you don't believe what Jesus said, I mean. Read. He shall be free. Read. Thus have ye made the commandment of God. Jesus of said, you made the, by you twisting the commandment of God and, and making it what you want it to be, what did you do? Read. That you made the commandment of God. Of none effect of, by your tradition. Of, of no effect. That's it, brother. Why? By your Tradition, you have unpurified the gospel by adding something that is not yes. there. See, the gospel is pure. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, Seeing ye have purified, listen, purified. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, if you want to look at it. Yeah. Ye have it. purified That's your it. souls in obeying the truth. Christ said, Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word. word is truth. You have been purified by the word of God through spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren and see that you love one another with a pure heart. Church, with a pure heart. See, see, sometimes people look good on the outside. Yes, they do. But on the inside, something's wrong. Something's wrong. They, 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 they smile on your face and and, and you know they, they shake your hand, everything's good, but then turn around the corner, you know that I can't stand them. Well, you heard you heard about such and such told me that he won't say nothing to everybody. Won't come up to them and hey, you know, somebody told me, is this true? But but go on and spread it. Mess it all up. God tonight. Everything that look good ain't good. The ingredients, the inside, needs to be pure. It says, with a pure heart, fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed. Listen to this. Corruptible seed, the ingredients, church, need to be pure. Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. incorruptible. By what? By the word of God, because that's the only thing. That's it. That's pure. pure. That's the only thing that's pure. Which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God liveth and abideth yes. forever. Yes. For all flesh is as grass. Mm -hmm. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you, church. The, the word of God is pure. You shouldn't add any extra ingredients to it. You know what? Sometimes we 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 do. Yeah, we do. I know that's right. Sometimes the Bible makes us uncomfortable. <laughs> Sometimes you, you read something, you're like, man, I, I gotta give this up. Yeah, I can't, I can't just get sit down. I can't just go drink with my friends no more. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. That's too hard. He didn't, he didn't really see. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. You know, he he told Timothy to have a little wine for his stomach. See, see, it's, I'm a. I'm a it's in that brother. <laughs> how, how, he said, have a little wine. You know that uh, that word oinos means. It has two translations: oinos in Greek. Alcoholic wine is is translated as an alcoholic wine. Yeah. You know what the other translation is? Grape juice. <laughs> So, so let's get it right. Yes. Timothy, have a little grape juice 
<laughs> for your, you know grapes are good for you. Yes, they are. Good. Yeah. It's good for your for your for your gut. You know, all the all the fruit are divine. It's all good for your gut. Yes. You know, cranberry <laughs> juice, all that. Stuff. Yes. They clean you out. It's good for your stomach. He said, have a little, have a little grape juice for your stomach's sake. But well, well, well you know, it says wine, so. <laughs> Church, we have to have pure ingredients. And you know what? Sometimes we look at those that that have those unpure ingredients and, and it looks like they're having just the time of their lives. It do, bro. They, they're having so much fun. Man. I want to be a part of that. These, those people in the church, they boring, man. <laughs> Sitting there listening and reading about all the time, man. Boring. I want to go have some fun. Look, look, they're over there having fun looking at pigs just, just wallowing in the mud. Yeah. Look how much fun they having. Yeah. See, see, they look like they're having fun, but they're covered in filth. The filth of sin. That's up there. And you know what? The more you watch them enjoying themselves, the more you may get tempted to join in. It right. happen. Man, they, they having so much fun. Let me let me go jump in this pile of mud. They haven't. They, I know it's dirty, but they just having so much fun. I know I, I I read it in the scripture a thousand times, but but they just having so much fun. Let me let me join. Yeah. Let me join in. You know what? The closer you get to the mud, uh -oh. sometimes when they splash and it gets on you, yeah. it's gonna happen, brother. And you know what? As they splash it and, it and it gets on you, the easier it is to get in. Exactly. Well, well, I'm already dirty now. Yeah. That's it. Might as well Make go ahead. Take a clip, brother. I can see clear. Around. And jump in. <laughs> you know, if you think about that, people have you know have fun. They have a water gun fight. They're like, no, I don't want to get wet. But as soon as you get wet all the way, you might as well. Might as well. People are having a fool fight, you get smacked in the face with a yeah. pie. Get going you, with you might as well. Exactly. Kids playing outside, they're getting dirty, they got some new shoes, new Jordans, and they trying to they try not even to get them creased. You see the kid walk, that's the most ridiculous. They walk around on the heels. I've seen it sometimes. Trying not I've to crease right. the shoes. Yeah. Get them dirty. But as soon as they get creased, they go, well, oh well, it's creased now. Might as well. Walk like a regular person. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Exactly. See, once you get dirty, it's easier to get dirtier. After your after your new shirt gets a stain on it, it's your play shirt now. Yes. <laughs> you, you let it you let it get dirty now. After your, your new shoes get dirty, they're your play shoes now. You let them get dirty. You get some of that mud on you. Oh well, let me jump in. Don't get jealous of the pigs playing in the mud. Okay, yeah. They look like they're having fun, but they're covered in filth, sin, church. In Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 19, what does that say, Tom? Fret not thyself mm -hmm. because of the evil man. Mm -hmm. Now you be thou envious of the, at the wicked. Don't be envious of the people that are living in sin. Please don't. It looks like they have it all going on. They have 10 houses and a landlord. They got millions of dollars coming in. Yeah. But guess what? You're going to have way more when you get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Compare it, brother. What shall it profit a man? What shall it profit? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. It's sad. Because Christ told that he said he said they have their reward. Yes, they, do. they have their reward oh, now. Already. But see, yours is gonna be better. Yeah. It's gonna be something that you can't even imagine. Okay. But you gotta work for it, you gotta wait for it. He said, Fret not this because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked read. For well, there shall be no reward to the evil man. What do you mean no reward? What do you mean? They got 10 BMWs. Yeah. How is that not a reward? I've been driving the same car since 2003. <laughs> I should talk about it, bro. 
you could ever dream of. They, they take baths and money. Yeah, they're doing it right now somewhere. <laughs> there you are. Swimming in gold coins. Just tossing it up in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What shall they profit them if they gain all of that? Yeah. And then that judgment. They can't. They, they can't use none of it. They can't go back. Well, well. If I give you a million pieces of gold, can you pardon me? Uh, no. Depart from me. No, it's a sad thing. That's why he said there's no reward to the evil man. Read. The candle of the wicked shall be put because out. Because that candle that's burning so bright, look at it. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Yes, it is. It's gonna be put out. Read. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. And what? And meddle not. Don't get close to the mud pit. <laughs> it says meddle not. Read. With them that are given to change. For their calamity oh, shall rise. Back up, back up, brother. Back, 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 back up. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me, brother. Meddle not with them that are what? Given to change. Change. Help me, brother. The pure. They changed them. Well, you know, I, I I saw you making this apple pie, and and you know I did everything that you said to do. And, you know, I I I, I turned the, the oven up. I preheated it to three seventy five. I you know I let the apple sit and marinate in the in the cinnamon and sugar and all that stuff. And and then I put it and then I put it in the oven. And and why can't mine taste like yours? Right, Pastor, right. I saw I saw. I followed every single. Well, well, let me see the apples you're using, son. Let me, let me see that. Got worms crawling. Oh, wow. Wow. The ingredients have to be pure. The people that are giving the chain. Well, look, I'm just tired of man. We just need we need some music up in here. Yeah, yeah, we do right now. I'm tired of this just singing. <laughs> Yes, I am. Give it to change. Church, when you get tired of doing what God said to do, you're in trouble. Right. You are in trouble. What God said is better than what I said. You have to have the heart of a child. That's why Christ said that, that this child, when he, when he brought the child in the midst of the disciples when they're fighting over, over who's the best, I did this and I did that. Christ brought a child. Why? Because the child will listen. The child don't care. Bella, the sky is purple. Yes, sir. That kind of attitude, that kind of humility, whatever God said, I'm going to do it. That's, that's the child. That's why. That's why he said that. Not give it to change. They they have the attitude of, of just humility and, and obedience to God. Yes. And listen to what he said about those people that are given to change. Three. Okay. For their calamity shall rise their, their calamity. Calamity. Hit me, brother. A disaster. Calamity shall rise what? Suddenly. It won't, it won't just happen the first time. See, what happens is a little bit of change here, and a little bit of change here, and a little bit of change here, and all of a sudden, you're not even nowhere near where you're supposed to be. You change this and that, and this and that, and this and that, and all of a sudden, nobody's ever pleased. You can't never please. See, that's the thing about it. You can't never please everyone. But if we all agree that this is the answer, then we can get somewhere. Because, well, somebody would be like, well, I, I, I like it if you do this. And no, don't preach about that. Preach about this. Well, I don't really like that subject either. Preach about this. And, and you know, I think that we should have this. And You're never going to please everybody. 
No. A little change here, a little change there. Keep on changing, keep on changing. And then your calamity shall rise suddenly. And read, what does it say? And who knows the ruin of them both? That's <laughs> deep, Well, Ooh. pure ingredients is what's needed, church. Pure ingredients. But think about this. You might not mind spilling a little bit on your shirt. You eating a burger or something, you know, a little bit of ketchup, spilling it off. Oh, wipe it off. But, but think about this. God's expectations are high. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't want a little bit of taint of anything. Yeah. Just think about it like this. You, you don't mind spilling a little bit of ketchup on your shirt, but, but do you think a bride would want a little bit of ketchup on her no. wedding dress? Mm -hmm. uh, no. You see that? Mm -hmm. You see that? We see a little dirt. It's like, well, you know, that's okay. You know, we can. God won't mind. You know, just change it a little bit. Just tweak it a little bit. God missed this spot here. Let's fix it for him. We see a little dirt, but but that's not what God sees when He sees sin. We see a, a little bit of change. It's not gonna hurt, but that's not what God sees. It needs to be pure. It needs to be pure. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12, it says, there's a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Yes, it is. And yet is not washed from yes. their filthiness because exactly. they let a little bit of change come. Exactly. A little bit of change come. And a little bit of change come. And it kept on getting worse and worse and worse. You know what? There's good news, church. Yes, it is. There's good news. Because the flesh is impure, and humans make mistakes. But remember what I said at the beginning of the sermon. Thank God for another day. Because if you messed up yesterday, if you messed up yesterday, you have today to fix it. You have another chance. The flesh is impure, but, but with Jesus, church, we can be pure. In Romans chapter 13 and verse 14, it says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't let the flesh overcome you with its desires. Listen to this. These ingredients. One cup of sugar, two cups of self-rising flour, two eggs, a quarter teaspoon of chicken manure? What? Wait, what? Everything was sounding good until you added the last yes. ingredient. Yes. One of these things is not like the other. One of these. Exactly One thing right. doesn't belong. You added something onto it. And, and remember what I said about how God has high expectations. That bride doesn't want nothing on her dress. God doesn't want anything changed. And maybe you can see it now, because when you add something, it's like just adding a little bit, just a just a teensy drop of, of chicken manure to a cake. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Get it all. Oh, it's just a little bit. It's not gonna harm it. Uh huh. Taste it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, it was a good recipe, <laughs> but. And no one would like a cake like that, even with the smallest amount, church. See, we can't play with the integrity of our salvation. That's nothing to play with. No. A little bit of sin can ruin it all together. Yeah. Don't even let the smallest amount of a bad ingredient ruin the integrity That's of your right. salvation. You're gonna, you're gonna, the cake look good on the outside too, don't it? It looked good, but you tasted it. Yes. What? What is that? Yeah. Oh, you know, we just added a little extra. We thought you would what? You thought I would like it. Depart. You see that? You see that? You can see that. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 32, turn with me there. I'm, I'm running out of time. My time goes by fast. Man. Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 32. What does it say? I had to make the tree good. Mm -hmm. And it's fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt. 
and his fruit grew up. I know, I know, I, I'd rather you be hot or cold, I don't like no lukewarm. Either make the tree good or make it corrupt. Exactly. Be on the fence. Well, you know, we're kind of doing it. We're adding some things here and there. Don't either be good or green. For the tree is known by its fruit. Green. Yes. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, Jesus. speak good things? My Jesus. See, Jesus sees the heart. See, the Pharisees, they, they walk around praying right. out loud. Right. Oh, Lord, my God, thank you. Yes. Walking around with their hands up in the air and every, walking through the streets. Everybody looking at them. They, they get to sit on these high places. And everybody looking at them. Oh, y'all so holy. Yes. Uh, but Jesus knows. Look at her. But God looks at the heart. <laughs> yes. 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 Man, Jesus used some strong. He said, you vipers. This is it. You evil vipers. How are you going to speak good things? <laughs> For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See that? How are you going to speak good things? I know what your heart is like. Read. A good man out of a good treasure of the heart bringeth good, bring forth good things. You speaking good things, but your heart is evil. Read. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Read. But I say unto you, Come on, Christ. that every idle word that man speaketh. Come on, think, think about this. Every single thing that you say. Do we think about that when we cuss at somebody out? Uh -oh. Every, every single. Read that one more time. That every, that every idle word. Every little word. Read. That man shall speak, read. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. When? In the day of judgment. That's the only day that matters. You might not give account for it now. You might have got away, but but on the day of judgment, everything that every ingredient, see that? Yeah. Every ingredient matters. Let the words that not be pure. Every idle word that a man is going to give an account on the day of judgment. Read. But by thy words thou shalt be justified. There is the power of life and death in the tongue. All the time. Lord have mercy. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. Read. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You will be justified by confessing Christ. Right? Confession is made unto salvation. You're justified by confessing your sins. I said, if you confess your sins before men, I'll be faithful and just to forgive you. You have the power of justification in your tongue. You know what else you have? The power to condemn yourself. Yes. God, it has to be pure. The ingredients, church, has to be pure. And you know, like I was saying, some things look good on the outside. Yes. But are nasty on the inside. You know, it's better for the for the inside to be pure and for the outside to look just just like a wreck. If if the inside is pure, if you if, if yeah, young yeah. people, can I talk to you for a second? Please get off, get off your phone for a second. Just okay, listen. I will. I will. Listen, listen, I will. Listen. I will. Young people, if if you you get older, you're thinking about dating. Don't look for someone. Everybody said, don't look for someone. Look for yourself first. You need to purify yourself. You need to learn how to love yourself first before you can think about having somebody love you. And when you find yourself, don't fall for the lust of your eyes. Please don't. Why do they look so that's cute? One right, that's one on right there. Oh, he's so cute. That's one on right there, brother. He told one me one I was right beautiful. There. Teach me something, brother. Don't fall for the lust of your eyes. You need to look at the heart. Yes. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. But can I, can I, can I just tell you something? Yes, yeah, please. Hurry up. Just, young people, don't date somebody because they are 10. You know what I'm saying? A 10 out of 10. Just because they are 10 
doesn't mean they're pure within. You know, you might be better off getting a seven or eight. Yes, might be. I'm not saying it's impossible, but <laughs> but I'm saying these days it's hard to find somebody that's pure within that's a ten. That's right. That's right. Because because it's, it's when, when you're pretty and, and, and you're real head, sometimes people let you get away with. It. Yeah. Yes. They let yes. you get away with things. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, you, I can't stay mad at you. Oh, well, yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's hard for them to be humble. I'm going to tell you, God bless me, I found one. <laughs> and they're rare. <laughs> Amen. But, some, but you, you might be better off looking for a, a seven or eight. That's, that's, that's fine as a stallion, but, but don't know it. You hear what I said? Don't know it. They don't know it. They're humble. A humble, hard worker. That loves the Lord. You hear that? Yeah. A humble, hard worker that loves the Lord. If you can fulfill those three things, then if they look good, that's just the icing on the cake. 